has exalted itself as God and did not create the heaven and earth, it will all be destroyed. It will all come to a place and bow down. Father, we declare this afternoon that there is no any other God but you. We come to you, the God who is not far from us, but the God who is near. Our Father, we don't want to worship you from afar. We want to worship you when we are near you. Even this afternoon, Lord, we pray. May you draw us closer to you. May you embrace us, Lord. Hear us as we worship you this afternoon. May our worship, may our soul come before your throne as a sweet incense, my God of Father. May it be like a sweet smelling sour in your nose. Minister unto you and soothe your heart even today. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory and honor. Yes, Lord, for thou, Lord, art worthy. Can you join us and even worship with us in this song? what you're facing the Lord is faithful he's truly perfectly faithful and he's a God who is near us 
a God who is our refuge, a God who is our strength, the God who is always with us and is so near those who call unto him. He deserves the glory, he deserves the honor, and he deserves all our praise. I just want to welcome you this morning in our lunch, our service, on behalf of World Trumpet Mission, and on behalf of Apostle Dr. John Melinde, I sit here to welcome you for this service, and I welcome you, our dear friends, our online friends we are becoming a family we thank you for all of you who are continually tuning in that we can walk together and fellowship together in the word of god in this service and i want to thank all of you who have chosen and those who are praying to stand with us on the challenge of putting right our recording instruments trying to build a mini studio where we can stand and be able to minister to the nations. I believe that you've been blessed as Apostle John Melinda ministers. You've been blessed by the team as we come before you and we share what God has put into our hearts and what he has been teaching us. And as Apostle John was telling us yesterday about the cost of the mini studio that we need so that the word can go forth, I know that if you've really been blessed, you want your neighbor to be blessed. You want this word to go forth even in these last days that we may go to all the nations and fulfill the great commission i want to tell you as you're meditating on what you'll be giving in so that we can do what we are supposed to do i also encourage you pray that god will touch someone else those who have the resources those whom god ordained to stand with this ministry in such a time like this hallelujah we praise the lord right now we are going to go into prayer and in this one hour that we have, I want us to set our hearts so that we can try to see how do we come before the altar. Remember, we are being taught the seven essentials of the altar. Right now, within the last week, we talked about the word of God. That when we are coming on the altar, what we desire is to draw the presence of God in our lives, to draw the presence of God in our families, that the realm of his presence will even go beyond our families, begin to touch our neighbors, touch our community. Because, beloved, we grow in the presence of God. We go deeper and deeper. And the more deeper we go, the more that presence touches us and even begin to influence the world that is around us. And so far we have been talking about two things. We talked about the word of God as the first thing that we have to come with before before that we have to come with before the Lord as we are coming on the altar. We saw how we have to read the word, how we have to share the word, how we break the bread of the word together. And then next we shared about praise and worship. When we come out of the word, what we get out of the word is the praise and worship. And then lastly, Apostle and we were sharing about prayer. And we talked about prayer a little bit. And I believe we are going to go deeper into that. But right now, I want us to come into the word of God. And as we go into the word, we are going to take this word that we have read. And then we are going to bring it and begin to worship and exalt the Lord. And then we are going to go into prayer, bringing our lives before God. I'm asking you, please, let us be together. Let our hearts connect and let us all, our minds be focused on God. Don't focus on me, but if you can close your eyes, if you can lift your hands up, let us, all of us, focus unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you right now, open your Bibles in Psalms 103. We are going to begin from there. Psalms 103. And we are going to read these 22 verses together. Hallelujah. What does the Bible say? Psalms 103. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender 
mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always cheat, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins. Noah rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is higher above all the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. So far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as the grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. From the way for the wind passes over it and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of our Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children his children, to such as keep his commandment, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all place of his dominion. Bless the Lord, all my soul. Hallelujah. This is the word of God. I love Psalms 103. When, more, when David is declaring all the benefits of the Lord, he is speaking to his soul and telling his soul the reason why he has got to praise the Lord. There are moments when we stand in our spirit. Remember, we have spirit, soul, and body. And we stand in the power of the Holy Spirit in our spirits. And then we begin to minister unto our, unto our souls. So David is telling his soul, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Who is speaking to the soul? The spirit man in him is now ministering to the son, telling his soul, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I want to take just one minute. And I just want you to close your eyes or you look into the scripture and look into the blessings that are in this scripture and what we see of God. And then we are going to exalt our God. And then afterwards, we are going to come before him in this word with praise, with thanksgiving, with worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When we look into the scripture, we see that we are coming to the God who is good. We are coming to the God who forgives all our iniquities. We are coming to the God who heals all our diseases. We are coming to our Redeemer, the God who redeems our lives from destruction. We are coming to the God who crowns our souls with tender masses. We are coming to the God who satisfies our mouth with good things. 
we are coming to the God who renews our strength as the egos. He renews our youth as the egos. We are coming to the Lord who executes righteousness and judgment to all the oppressed. Because people are oppressed because there is no justice and people are oppressed when there is no righteousness. But this is the God who comes and delivers those who are and he executes righteousness and judgment to those who are being oppressed. We are coming to the God who revealed himself to the children of Israel, to the God who revealed his ways, taught Moses his ways. So if he taught Moses his ways, we are coming to the God who is a teacher. He knows what to teach you. He knows what to teach me. He knows the times and the seasons, what to teach you and what he wants you to learn. And when we pay attention and we open our ears unto him, we have the greatest teacher who will teach us and prepare us season after season so that we can be able to manifest his glory in our lives. We are coming to the God who is merciful and gracious. We are coming to the God who is slow to anger. The God who has so much mercy. His mercies remember they are new every morning. We are coming to the God who will not cheat forever. The God who will not be hungry with us forever. But when we confess our sins unto him, what does he do? He's the God who forgives us. He's the God who never keeps his anger forever. So why should we keep our anger forever when our Father in heaven never keeps his anger forever? He knows how to forgive. We are coming to the Father who loves us so much that he has not paid us according to our iniquities. He has not paid us according to our sins. The Bible says somewhere, Lord, if you mark iniquity, no man shall be able to stand before you. The Bible says somewhere, if God treats us according to our sins, if he says he's going to pay us for every wicked thought, for every wicked word we speak, for every wicked action, then he would consume us. He would consume us. But you know, we ought to give him praise and to thank him because he has not rewarded us according to our sins. So this is a merciful God. And then we are coming to the God who is far above, even as we have been singing this song, the God you are higher above in the heavens. We are coming to the God who is not just in the earth, but we are coming to the God who fills the earth, the God who fills the heavens. And then there we can say, my God is a big, big God. My God is a big, big God. He fills the heavens, he fills the earth, and he rules over everything. And then the Bible still tells us we are coming to the Father. We are coming to the Father. And the Bible tells us it's not as the cruel fathers of this world. No, this is a good father. And it says as the father pitteth his own children, so this father also pitteth us. We are coming to the Father who knows us. That's what the Bible is telling us. This is the God who knows us. So my sister, my brother, you're coming to the God who knows you. He knows our infirmities. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our frame. And then, because he knows us, it has pleased him to forgive us. And you know, as the east is far from the west, he has separated us from all our sins. We are coming to the Lord who is the, the, whose mercy is everlasting. His mercies are everlasting. We are coming to the God who is the righteous God. He remembers mercy to a thousand generations, to those who keep his covenant. Now when we are talking about the God whose mercies are new every morning, he's still telling us he keeps mercy. He shows his righteous act, his goodness to the people who keep the covenant. Now this is one of the things we are going to bring before the Lord, telling him, Father, what does it mean? To keep your covenant. Teach me your covenant. Help me to know how to walk in your covenant. Why? Because Father, I want to be part of the people who test of your goodness. I want to be part of the people and to whom you show your righteous acts. I want to be part of the people whom you're pleased with. The people whom you draw close unto thyself. 
And then the Bible says the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. This is the God who rules over everything. The God whose dominion is above everything. The Lord whose dominion fills the heaven and the earth. So if we know that God reigns and his dominion is over the earth and all the heavens. So what happens? We know the God whom we are worshipping. That's why he says when we come before him, let us know that he is God. He's not a God who is ruling over my village. It's not a God who is looking, looking over my community, but he rules over everything. Hallelujah. And then again, we see David exhorting his, himself and saying, bless ye the Lord my soul. And then we know that all creation, all angels, and everything that is in heaven and earth, everything has to praise the name of the Lord. This is the God we are coming to, beloved. This is the God we are going to talk to. And according to this that we see of him, this which we see of him in this, in this chapter, I want us to come before him and begin to exalt him and begin to glorify him. This is one of the secrets, beloved, as apostles been teaching us, that when you come before the Lord, let the, first, let the issue not be the focus on you. No, let our focus be on him. As we see who is, and we declare who he is, the angels in heaven begin to open up the gates of the heavenly tabernacle to us. The angels begin to bow down, ushering us to enter into the courts of our Father when we come before him with praise. Yes, we know our sins. Yes, we know our weaknesses. But we don't begin with that. You know, God, I'm so bad. You know, God, this is what I've done. You know, God, I'm evil. No, that's not what we come with. We come with him. With, we come before him with thanksgiving. This is the first thing that should always be on our lips. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Remember all his benefits. One man sang, count your blessings every day. Count your blessings. As we come before the Lord, the first thing is, you know, you've done things long, wrong. You know you're not perfect, but God knows that. You know, you know, God knows that. He says, okay, I know all that. I know your weaknesses. I know the lies you have told. I know the thoughts you have had. I know everything that you've done. But God is saying, when you're coming before me, don't put that fast. Don't put that fast before me. What is God saying? When you're coming before me, first put your luggage down. First put your burdens down. And first, the first thing is, exalt me. I know everything. We, as a, you remember when Apostle was telling us last time, we are not bringing news to God. The Bible has told us here, we have seen in this verse that he's the God who knows us. He knows us more than we know ourselves. So I want us to come in that spirit. And as we go on, you, you, you're just going to see. We come to that place where we, are not, we have not even planned it. But as we worship him, as we exalt him, as we praise him, you will just feel we come to that place where you feel now the Holy Spirit is telling you, now this is the time to bring the baggage. Now this is the time to begin to confess these things. And when we confess and we lay them on the altar, and then we will begin to see the blood is washing us. The blood is washing us. And when you believe you have confessed, First, your sin, the blood has washed you. What happens next? You burst into praise. You burst into worship. And as you're worshiping him, as he revealing himself unto earth, and then we go deeper with him. Now we come to the place where we are surrendering our lives to him, where we are giving our lives unto him, where we are entering, renewing our covenant, where we are making vows, we are making pledges, we are making pledges, we are declaring, Lord, I I am yours. I am yours. But before we come to that place, the Holy Spirit will take us step by step. Now, let me request you, just close your eyes. I know you understand what I'm saying, but we want to go into the practice of this right now. I just want you to close your eyes. Just think about all these character, all this that pertains unto God that we have seen. Right now, we are coming before him with thanksgiving. If you don't have anything to thank him, thank him for everything you have. Thank him for your children. Thank him for your health. Bless the Lord. Tell your soul this afternoon, my soul, bless the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, you're glorious. Hallelujah, Lord, you're wonderful. How excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name, O oh Lord. How excellent is your name, O oh Lord. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, oh Lord, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name. and merciful. You have comforted us, loving God of oh Father. You have cleansed us from our sin, O King of glory. 
Your mercies are new every morning, Abba Father. You've been able to cleanse us daily, my God, oh Father, King of glory. Father, we say thank you. We know it is the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, us, my loving God, oh Father. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb, Father. Thank you for the blood that cleanses us, oh loving God, oh Father, Lord. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for not hiding your face away from us, Father. Thank you for not casting us away, my God, oh Father. Thank you for daily encouraging us, Lord. There are moments when we have felt we don't want to talk to you. There are moments when we have felt when we don't even have the strength to open our lips unto you. But Father, you have been there, my God. You've sent someone to encourage us. You've sent someone with a word to encourage us to begin to call unto you. There are moments when our faith has been so weak. When we look to the left and we don't see you. When we try to seek you on the, on the, on the right and we don't see you. When we are like alone in the wilderness, loving God of Father. Yet you've been so near. In such times, Father, you have whispered unto us. You have whispered your word unto us, Father. Sometimes you have encouraged us in the way where we didn't know where we would get the courage, my God. You've always been there to restore our hope, my God. There are moments we've gone through and we were so desperate, desperate. When we were so disappointed in the times when our hearts have despaired, my God. When we have lost hope, when the friends we have forsaken us, when those who we love, they have gone back home and we felt like we were desolate. When we felt when we were alone, my loving God of Father, you were there. Some of us, when we lost our mothers, when we lost our brothers, when we lost the people we love, no one would have been able to comfort us, Lord. No one would have been able to heal our hearts, King of glory. No one, Daddy. But you have been there even in such moments, Lord. In the dark moments, Lord, you've been there. You have whispered unto us in the middle of the night. You've whispered your voice unto us in the middle of the night, Father. In the middle of thick darkness, my God. And then we saw the silver rain on the black cloud. And then we saw the beam of light in the midst of the darkness. And our souls rose up again. And we began to sing praises unto you. Father, we want to thank you. When we look back, we see the valleys. We see the dark moments. We see the moments when we felt like we were not we were not going to be able to live the next day. But you took us through. Right now, Father, we have the faith and we believe that you're able to take us through even today. You're, you're able to carry us through. You're able to carry us through, loving God of oh Father. You are so glorious. You are so wonderful. You are so worthy. We exalt you, Lord. We give you praise. And we give you glory. Father, when we see how good you've been unto us, when, you see, when we see your love, when we see how gracious you've been unto us, Father, we get to know your love, that you've loved us so much, Father. But who wants to grieve the one who loves him, Father? Even among us, the children of men, Lord, we do not want to hurt the people we love. We don't want to grieve them, loving God, oh, Father. King of glory, we say the same thing unto you, Lord. That we do not want to grieve you. We do not want to grieve you, Father. We don't want to grieve your spirit, Father. We do not want to bring sorrow to your heart. Father, we know that when we rebel against you, we hurt you, Lord. You feel so sorrowful over us, Father. When we turn our backs on you, Lord, 
you know the end of the way that is not given unto you you know the end of the way of deception father you know the end of the way of rebellion loving God of oh father because you said it clearly in your word the reward of sin and death and father you're so gracious and merciful you do not deny it in our death my God it is not your heart's desire that we die Lord it's not your heart's desire father that we go through pain my God it's not your heart's desire that the enemy should afflict us with sicknesses with pestilences my God but father so many are the times we've opened up the door for the serpent to bite us you tell us you put a hedge around us Lord because you do not want us to be beaten by the serpent but when we break through this edge Lord as it is written in your word that he who digs a hole in his head a serpent shall bite him Father we know that you're not just giving us laws and commandments you're not just trying to control us you're not just subjecting us to yourself father but you're showing us the way of life they've decided lord teach me your ways and in psalms 103 the bible said you taught moses your ways oh lord that we may learn your ways of loving god of oh father that you may teach us your ways, O oh King of glory. That we will be able to glorify you in the land of the living. That we will be able to exalt you in these mortal bodies, loving God, O oh Father. There are things that we've done, Father. And they have brought affliction unto us. And we have even afflicted our neighbors, loving God, O oh Father. We've walked in sexual immorality and we have afflicted our own selves. We have afflicted our neighbors and even afflicted our children. We have practiced infidelity to the point of our marriages breaking up, Father. To the point of divorce, loving God, oh Father. All this, my God, the works of evil, the flesh, when we walk in the flesh, Father, we afflict our own selves. We turn away from your blessing. And not only that, Father, but we even, my God of oh Father, cause pain to our neighbors, Lord. We have walked in anger. And in anger, we have spoken words that have hurt our neighbors, Father. There are people who are still crying because of the words we spoke unto them. Every time they remember the words we spoke to them in anger, they say, where is God? Why did God allow this person to say this to me? Father, we have caused the people, in, because of our anger, to cause them to ask where you are. We've caused our neighbors, Father, to blaspheme your name in our anger. <laughs> Father, we have walked in envy, all these works of the flesh, Father. <laughs> right now, Abba, that we just don't want to confess our sins. But when we look in this word, my God, oh Father, in Psalms 103, we see you, the God who loves us. We see you the God who is gracious and merciful. We see you our redeemer. We see you as our father. Father, we are not just saying forgive us so that we can continue in our sins. We are not bringing our sins, my God of Father, and saying forgive us so that we can continue. But Father, we've come to know that you are holy and you hate wickedness you hate the works of the flesh father this is the reason why we come before you and we say father forgive us forgive us king of glory things that we've done that have not glorified you lord Forgive us, King of glory, for the way that we have grieved your Holy Spirit. In 
the way we have spoken. We have spoken in anger. We have spoken in envy. We have spoken in jealousy. We have spoken lies to one another. We have spoken in the flesh, Lord. We have spoken what we want to speak, Lord. We've not submitted ourselves unto you, Lord. And in this, Father, we have not only caused pain to you, but we have caused pain to our neighbors. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, King of glory. Forgive us for not exalting you as our God. Forgive us for not allowing you to be the Lord of our life, Father. Forgive us for rebellion, Lord. Forgive us, King of glory, for choosing to be independent. Forgive us, Father, for not submitting ourselves to you. This which we call freedom, it is bringing death. Freedom from your covenant. Freedom from your word. Freedom from your law that we can say whatever we want to say and think whatever we want to think and do whatever we want to do. It has not benefited us, Father. It has only caused us harm and it has only caused us to harm our neighbors. Father, we humble ourselves before you. And we say, Abba, Father, we want to exalt you as the Lord of our lives. We want to glorify you, Father. We want you to be not just our God. We want you to be the Lord of our lives. We want you to be our God. We want, Father, to come to that place where we exalt you in everything we do. Father, we want to come to that place where we glorify you in everything that we say. We want to come to that place, Father, where everything we do, we do it for your glory. We want to come to that place, Father, when you are the reason for our speech. You are the reason for our thoughts. You are the reason for every action that we do. We want you to be the reason for our lives, Father. That your word will be fulfilled in our lives. That in you we live. In you we move. In you we have our being, Lord. You are our God. You are the creator. You are our redeemer. You are our father. You created us, Father, for your glory. You created us, loving God, oh, Father, for intimacy, that we may know your love. That we may know your love. And that through us, all creation will see your love. Through us, all creation will test of your goodness. Loving God, oh, Father, here we are. We bring our lives unto you on the altar, Father. We bring our souls unto you, King of glory. We surrender them to you, loving God, oh Father. And we're asking you, Lord, teach us your ways. Teach us your ways, loving God, oh Father. And help us to obey your voice, oh loving God, oh Father. Even right now, you're revealing unto us so many things, my God. You're reminding us so many things you've been speaking unto us, Father. We feel conviction in our hearts of the things that we've done which we ought not to have done, Father. We feel conviction of things that we ought to have done and we didn't do them, loving God, oh Father. We feel the conviction, loving God, oh Father, that many times we have neglected prayer. There were many months, many days we have neglected the word. And our lives have become so weak. We've become so weak. Father, when we come before you, we come that you may bless us, loving God of oh Father. You rejoice when we come to you. And you pour your spirit unto us, my God. You cause your river to flow inside of us as your city. As you said it in Psalms 46, my God. That there is a river that flows in the city of the Lord. For that this is your heart's desire. That your river, the fountain of living water, shall flow in us. And even rivers of living water shall flow out of us, Father. 
It is your desire that you turn our homes into cities. It's your desire that we will become moving cities, my God of Father, carrying your glory, being the light wherever we go, that the nations will know that you are the Lord, that the oppressed will hear and cry unto you, loving God of Father. The dozen bondages who have lost hope shall receive hope and they will come out of their darkness, loving God of Father. Precious loving God of Father, we do not want to turn away from this blessing. We don't want to turn our backs again unto you, Lord. We don't want to neglect our prayers again, loving God of Father. We don't want to neglect our altars once again, O King of Glory. Right now we feel in these days that we've been waiting on you and hearing your word. There is a fire that has begun inside on our altars, my God. We can feel the fire beginning to glow on the altar. We once had big fires and we lost them. But Father, this one time, this fire that we feel, this little fire we are feeling beginning to emerge, beginning to burn on the altar of our hearts, my God. This one time we want to be persistent, my God or oh Father. We don't want to look back, my God. We don't want to allow any distractions, Father. We don't want to lose this fire. Father, we ask you, may you teach us how to keep the fire burning on the altar. May you teach us how to be persistent in prayer. You are the only one who can teach us, Lord. You alone can teach my sister how to be persistent. You alone can teach my brother how to be persistent. You alone can teach us how to continually find our altars, my God or Father, that the fire will not go out, King of glory. This is the time, my loving God of Father, where we do not want the fire on our altars to die, my God. We do not want to lose this fire again, King of glory. Father, I pray for every soul on which you have reignited a fire again, my God of Father. It is like a little fire that has begun to burn, my God of Father. There is a little wheel of prayer that we are feeling inside of us, my God. There is a little desire of the word, my God of Father, that is growing inside of us. Father, we do not want to lose this, King of glory. We do not want to lose this loving God of oh Father. Father, teach us. Teach us how to keep this fire burning, my God of oh Father. Teach us how to remain as living sacrifices on the altar, my God. For when you take away the sacrifice, the fire stops to burn. When you take away the sacrifice, there cannot be fire on the altar. When Aaron used to come on the altar every morning, he used to put on the wood and then daily putting on the daily, daily sacrifice, loving God our Father. When we put the word in our lives, my God, and bring our lives as living sacrifices, my God, the fire cannot stop burning on our altars. Lord, we took the sacrifice away. We took the sacrifice of waking of glory, even as it is written, my God of oh Father, in the book of Daniel. But when the deceiver comes, my God, and he exalts himself in the holy place, he takes away the sacrifice. When the evil one, the man of evil comes and exalts himself in the holy place, he takes away the sacrifice. Father, we allow the deceiver. There is something we have allowed in our hearts, my God, that has exalted itself in the sanctuary, my loving God of oh Father. And it took away the sacrifice. It took away the daily sacrifice. That is why I'm praying, my God. I pray for my sister, for my brother. I pray for myself, King of glory. Help us my God or oh Father to know that thing that we have exalted in the sanctuary. What have we allowed to be exalted in the sanctuary and it has made the daily sacrifice to cease. Father there is something in my sister's life there is something in my brother's life that which has caused the daily sacrifice to cease my God and when there is no more sacrifice then we are corrupted my God of oh Father then deception begins to come in my God of oh Father and then we forsake the covenant Father we do not want to forsake your covenant my God we don't want to be a people who break covenant you said in the last days my God of oh Father in 2 Timothy the chapter 3. Father, you said people will love themselves and they will break the covenant. They will be called covenant 
breakers. Father, we do not want to be part of the spirit of this generation. We don't want to be part of the spirit of the last days that causes people to be covenant breakers. Fathers, we have read in your word in Psalms 103. We want to be people who keep the covenant, my God of oh Father. We want to be people who walk in the covenant, my God. For those who keep your covenant, my God, you honor them because you have honored the covenant. You glorify them because they have glorified you, King of glory. Precious loving God of oh Father, we ask you even right now, open our eyes, Father. Help us to see that thing that thing in our heart, that thing in my brother's heart, that thing in my sister's heart that has exalted itself in the sanctuary and it has made the daily sacrifice to cease. To some of us, my God or oh Father, it is just the appetite for food. To some of us, Father, it is the desire for money. To some of us, loving God or oh Father, it is unforgiveness. There is that one person we have refused to forgive. To some of us, my God, it is anger. To some of us, loving God or oh Father, the spirit of sexual immorality has exalted itself in the holy place, my God. It has caused the daily sacrifice to see, to cease. We are continually having wicked thoughts my God. Some of us are even watching pornography, loving God of oh Father. Some of us, my God of oh Father, are doing sexual immorality, masturbation and all wickedness, King of glory. This, the spirit of sexual immorality, the spirit of sexual perversion has exalted itself in the holy place that the daily sacrifice has seized. The spirit of greed has exalted itself in the holy place that the daily sacrifice has seized. The spirit of anger has exalted itself in the holy place that the daily sacrifice has seized. King of glory, we pray. Lord, I pray. Open our eyes to see. Open our eyes to see the abomination that has exalted itself in the holy place, in the hearts, my God, in the sanctuary of our bodies, that it has caused the daily sacrifice to cease. Open our eyes, O oh King of glory. Our lives belong to you. Father, this is the time that you open our eyes that we may see. This is the time, Father, that you help us to be willing and able to let go of this abomination. This is not time to confess sins, Father. The time has come for us to turn around. We don't want any more wasted days. We don't want any more wasted years. We don't want to waste life anymore. The time has come, Father. For us to turn unto you. The time has come loving God of oh Father. For us to repent. The time has come loving God of oh Father. For us to turn around. That is why we are asking you. As your word is written my God of oh Father. In Ephesians 3.16. As Paul was praying for the Ephesians. That I pray that the Lord will strengthen you. In your inner man. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray, may you strengthen us in the power of the Holy Spirit that we will be willing and we will be able to turn away from every wicked way. We will be willing and able to reject this abomination that has exalted itself in the sanctuary that, Father, we shall again submit ourselves unto you. Come out of rebellion. Let down our lives as living sacrifices and build an altar for you. This is the time to glorify your name. This is the time for you to be glorified in these mortal bodies. This is the time to worship you. This is the time to glorify you. This is the time for you to be known as God in our generation. We surrender all to you, Father. We surrender all to you, King of glory. You examine the heart, examine my heart. Tell Lord, examine my heart. And as I wait upon you, reveal to me every wicked way. Reveal to me every abomination that has exalted itself in the holy place. That has caused the daily sacrifice to cease. That my altar loses the fire. Hear us, Father. We surrender our lives to you, Daddy. We surrender all to you, Abba. Gwa kemere mitima. Kemere mitima jafemu kama. Tulagebuli echomu zizo eche gulumiza watukovu. 
tulagabuli ya chomu zizo mkama ya chitakirizi wa masogo tulagabuli ya chomu zizo mkama ya chizu yiza sadaka okubela ngerete kwa kuchoto mkama tuagala kulaba chiti wacho we want to see your glory in the land of the living we want to glorify your name we want to see you glorified in our marriages we want to see you glorified in our families we want to see you glorified in our nations father we want to see you glorified in this generation because you deserve it lord you deserve it abba you deserve the glory you deserve the honor even right now we worship you we exalt you and we say father may your kingdom come may your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven may your name be glorified even today you are awesome king of glory you are wonderful loving god of father no one can be likened unto thee i surrender all to you sacrifice before the Lord your offering your thanksgiving your tithe whatever you feel this afternoon to give unto the Lord I know right now you can't pick your, your, your phone to press the buttons but just pick it in your heart and tell him Lord I'm bringing my 2,000 to you I'm bringing 1,000 to you Lord I'm giving you that 5,000 when you mention it God knows where it is and he knows that you're going to give it in. Just mention it before the Lord. Tell him, Lord, I'm bringing my 500. Tell him, Lord, I'm bringing my 10,000. Whatever amount you're going to bring unto him, just mention it before him. And after we dedicate it before him, then you're going to press your buttons on your phone and bring them in. Father, this is our offering that we are bringing unto you. You've heard, my God, oh, Father, the amount that one, each one of your children is dedicating to you father may you receive that offering may you receive that thanksgiving may you receive that love offering may you receive it father to the glory of your name king of glory 
we give unto you not because you want but because this is the way you say it when we give unto you it shall come back unto us good measure pressed down and running over you said we shall not cease to sow and when we sow we shall reap father i pray even in this time of drought as 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 isaac my god of father got and harvest a hundredfold lord i pray for your children your sons and daughters who are sowing in this time of the drought May they harvest a hundredfold, my God of oh Father. A blessing without sorrow. May you give them joy. May you give them peace. May you cause your face to shine upon each one of them. Thank you, Father, because you're doing even much more than what we can think or even ask. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to say at 8 p.m., we shall be having the servant of God. We shall be having the word of God. Dr. John Molina is going to be with us at 8 p.m. to minister unto us in the word. Call someone else and tell him, please tune in, that as the family together, we can continue to have the fellowship. May the good Lord bless you so much and be with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say, we love you.